Hello! In this video we're going to look at salting a password. So previously we looked at kind of the basic form processing, we looked at hashing the password, now we're going to talk about salting the password. So if you're just interested in what is salt, this is a perfect video for you. If you've been watching the series and you want to add some salt to your password, well, we're going to do that. What we're not going to do is get too deep into this. I'll talk about where you could go deeper, but really I just want you to understand, right? I mean, this isn't the solution to all your needs, but what it is, is a good start on the discussion of password security. So in our last video, all we really did, we put this insert in here. We talked about that that wasn't so good. And then we decided that a hashed password is a lot better than an unhashed password because now we can literally, I can say things like, I don't know what anyone's password is. So the problem is rainbow tables, and I try to talk about that a little bit. So, so hash, hashing a password is a good measure of security. Ultimately, this all boils down to, like if you got this user like myself, this stubborn guy who just wants to do ABC as the password, or even if it's eight characters long, there's still some bad eight character passwords. Um, we can't stop users from doing bad ha passwords, but what we can do is salt them to help them out. Hashing, that's what we need to do on our end. But salting, so salting is like this. So it's gonna happen before you hash it. So I'm gonna take that password, and I guess I'll call it uh, salted, right? I never uh, hesitate to create more variables. And I'm gonna type a big string of garbage, right? And then I'm gonna concatenate that with pass one. So I literally take that password ABC, and I prepend a big string of junk onto it. So what this accomplishes is now, like the password is still ABC, but the issue is that as far as the hash algorithm is concerned, it's now a much stronger password. That with ABC on the end of it is definitely not in any list of 100,000 most common passwords. And it's getting so long at this point that a brute force attack isn't gonna help. And if you want to salt it some more, you could put some junk on the end. Right now that little flawed password is literally just in the middle of some stuff. And so now I need to take this thing and put the salted in there. So I'm gonna take the salted password, I'm gonna hash that, and then I'm gonna store the hashed password. So I save this. And I head back here, I refresh this. A refresh literally is just gonna insert the same exact user, but we're going through some different steps. Now I head over to my table, I'm gonna browse the table, and you're gonna see different password as far as what's stored. So that's ABC and it's hashed, and right, this is a lot better than that because I can't look at this and tell what the password is. But uh, if someone had the tools available to them, they could kind of uncover that this might be that. This right here is such a strange password to start with that no one's going to be able to reverse engineer that. The threat of uh, cracking a hash is that you look at this and you're like, hey, I know what that is. That's ABC through a SHA-512. Now, no person probably sees that, but a machine could recognize that kind of a thing. This is just some random string of garbage run through SHA-512, and that is not going to get guessed by anybody. So let's talk about why this isn't perfect. There's a couple problems with this. This is what you'd call short salt, because it's not real, it's not gigantic, it's not super long, and it's simple salt. We're using the same salt for every user. I'm just hoping that it illustrates the purpose of, of the process, which is taking that, which is to take that bad password and we're turning it into a much better password in terms of strength. And so it accomplished that goal. But if you want to do this right, and the reason I can't do it right is it would just take some changes, but, but the best way to do this you should use unique salt or random salt. So if you want to use random salt or unique salt, you should Google that. And I'm sure there's a bunch of things teaching you how to do it. I have no problem with making a video on that. It would be a video and it wouldn't be really long, but I'm just not sure how many people would watch that. I'm just getting started with PHP videos. and uh, I'm not trying to make a million videos, especially if, if no one's going to watch them because uh, this right here illustrates what salt is but basically how it would work was i'd have to i would have to take this table i would have to add another column to it and that column would be called salt and so if we're going to do random or unique salts i would store i would generate a random salt for each user and then i would apply that salt for each user before i hashed it so you see i can't just add that because i'd have to make some modifications to this table and uh, that would be a little bit of an issue. Now, I certainly could do it, I'm just not doing it. I just want you to understand how salt does figure into the equation. So if you salt and hash the password, you're doing a lot of what you can do to make 
you know, if someone ever got access to this table, they no longer can reverse engineer passwords. And as far as liability is concerned of me, I don't know your username and your password. So this has solved most of my problems. This isn't the best you can do, but it's pretty good start. So that is hashing and salting a password. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to log in because that's what you probably should be thinking now is, oh, that's a great string of garbage we're looking at, but what in the heck are we supposed to do with it? The good news is when I show you how it works, it's not too tough. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.